your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Hebrews chapter 10. We'll be there in a few minutes and looking at some passages there. In Hebrews chapter 10, you might have heard the story of the, the married couple who was asleep in bed on a stormy night. And as they were asleep, they were awakened by a, a knock at the door. It was a frantic knock at the door. And the man jumped up, afraid of what might have happened, but he runs to the door, puts his robe on, he runs to the door, and as he gets to the door, he opens it up, and he finds this old man who is soaking wet from the rainstorm outside. You can tell, he can smell it on him. This man is drunk. And he comes to him and he says, My car won't start. Can you give me a push? The man at the house says... Sir, do you realize what time it is? You woke me out of a good night's sleep. You troubled me and my wife. And here you are, you're drunk. You come to my house, disturb my house, and you ask me to, to help you in the middle of the night, knowing that you're drunk, knowing that you've got all these issues. You go sober up somewhere, and we'll deal with this in the morning. I'll be glad to help you in the morning, but you, you go sober up somewhere tonight, and I'll... I'll help you in the morning. Slammed the door in his face, went upstairs, got back in bed, and his wife asked what was going on, and he began to tell her the story about what had happened. And she made him feel guilty. You left that poor man outside all night long. That drunk man, he could be hit by a car. Something could happen to him, and you'll have to answer for that because that's your fault. You should have helped him. You should have offered him a ride and carried him home or carried him to the police station and let him spend the night in jail to sober up a little. You should have done something instead of just leaving him out there. So because his wife gave him such a hard time, he got back up, put on his clothes, got his umbrella, and went outside. As he walked outside, he said, Are you still here? Hello, are you still here? I'll give you a hand. I'll try to help you out. Are you around here anywhere? He could hear something somewhere, but he didn't know where it was. Finally, he heard the man say, Here I am. He said, What do you, what do you need me to do? He says, I, I need a push. Where are you? I'll be glad to help you. You tell me where you are. I can't see you. Where are you? I need a push. Where are you at? If you tell me where you are, I might be able to find you and then we can take care of this. He said, I'm on your swing. <laughs> we all, it'll click with some of you in a few minutes. You'll hear, you'll get it in a minute. <laughs> we all need, if you're going to click that one more time, that'll come up. We all need a boost sometimes. Go ahead and raise your hand. How many of you have ever had to have your car jumped off or had to have or helped out in jumping somebody else off? Raise your hand. Look at that. Turn around and look at that. All right, now do me a favor. Write this down, okay? Write this down. 256-335-4163. That's John's number. <laughs> That's a plug for Simpsons right there. Have your insurance card ready and he can take care of you. He has a little box. It's, is it about this big? You got it in your pocket? Hold it up. That right there will jump your car off right there. When you need it in the bind, he, and he can order those for you if you like for $49.99, I think it's worth No, anyway. But he, we've all been in that situation. We've all been in that situation where we need jumper cables. We need somebody, everybody. I didn't see a single hand that didn't go up of a person that's of drivable age. We've all been in a situation where we've needed somebody to jump us off. Maybe you left the lights on. Maybe you left your radio on. Maybe you left your keys in the ignition and turned a little bit. Maybe the door didn't quite shut. Maybe the trunk lid was open and something happened. Or maybe the kids went outside. That's what my excuse always is. Because I never do anything like that. And you mess up and something happens and the car won't start. And you've got to have somebody come alongside of you to jump you off. Or you've been in the situation where you've done that for others. Let me explain how that works. Jumper cables is what you have. They have two ends. 
two ends with two clamps on each end, a red end and a black end. And you're supposed to connect the red end to the positive side and the black to the negative of each car. And then you're able to crank one car and it's able to pull off of the energy and feed off of the energy of the, the car that's cranked and that's running. Your car is able to feed off that and borrow the power from that so that you can be able to start your car. Now let me, let me give you a definite, because there's a definition for this. There's a definition for what it means to jump somebody off. This is what it is. I want to get this right. The act of drawing alongside or lending energy to get another going. The act of drawing alongside or lending energy to get another going. So you're drawing alongside, you're pulling alongside or pulling in front and you're lending the energy that you have in your car to somebody else or someone is lending their energy in their car to you so that you could use in your car so that you could get your car cranked and get on your way because your battery is dead or weak. What you didn't know is that definition I just gave you is the same definition for a New Testament word. Go ahead and click it there. To encourage. That's the exact same definition. To draw alongside someone. To lend from the energy that they have. To put energy in from them to you so that they could motivate you to continue on when your battery is running low. You've all been there where you've had a bad day. Something happened in your day and you felt just awful all day and somebody come along and say something positive to you, say something to lift your spirits and the rest of your day is much better because just of a few words that somebody else said. Or, or maybe this, maybe it is the lending of energy in, in the sense of you receive the touch from somebody. Maybe it's a hearty handshake, maybe it's a pat on the back, or maybe someone comes up and gives you that hug that you've been needing for some time and you feel the energy that they give you in that hug to make you feel so much better about things that you're uplifted. As a matter of fact, the same word encourage, encouragement, is the same Greek word where we get the word comforter when you look at John chapter 16 and it gives the definition of the Holy Spirit where it says the comforter will come. So when we encourage one another, actually what we're doing is we're showing that the Holy Spirit is in me and you're weak right now in, in some capacity spiritually and as I come to you, or, or just anyone, but I'm using me as an example, if I come to you being full of the Holy Spirit, come to you and hug you, or shake your hand, or pat you on the back, or offer you a compliment, or say something encouraging to you, what I'm doing is I'm sharing the Spirit with you. And we all, we all need that boost sometime. Every one of us have been in that situation where it's not our cars, it's our spirit. And there's things that have just gotten down in our life and we need some encouragement. We need something positive to happen. We need that boost. And you know what happens when you get a boost? If you get that boost in your car and you leave your car running for a period of time, you can cut your car off and you can turn it right back on and it'll crank again. Why? Because the energy was enough to last you. That once you got that little bit of energy from somebody else that they loaned you, that they lended you, that to put the courage in. That, that's another definition of it. To put courage in. To in, in courage. To put courage into something, into someone that it feeds off of your own engine, your own power, to where it's able to pull from itself. Just because you've got a weak battery, just because you've been jumped, doesn't mean you need a new battery, does it? Thank goodness, because they're expensive, aren't they? Even a lawnmower battery is around 80 bucks now. Just because you need a jump off doesn't mean you have to totally wipe out and get a new battery. It just means that there's a weak point going on and you need it fixed. 
So let's look at what this principle, of, this godly principle of encouragement, what this New Testament word means to us. So going down to the next slide, and let's look at the, we're going to look at the principles of encouragement, what it means to encourage. Uh, you can go ahead and click one more time and I'll show you. Here's, here's another way you can see the definition there. To call to one side, to comfort, to console, to strengthen, basically to put courage in. And I told you to look at the book of Hebrews, and that's where we're going to be for just a few minutes. When you look at the book of Hebrews... During the time of the writing of the book of Hebrews, the author is giving them, trying to offer them some courage because there's some persecution going on. The church has been spread abroad and, and, and they've been persecuted. Some of the Jewish Christians have been persecuted. And what the writer is trying to give them is there's a better life, that they have a better life now that they have Christ. And that encouragement of their old practices were good, but this is better. You had a high priest, but the one you got now is better. The blood of bulls and goats was good, but it could not do what the blood of Jesus could do. And trying to offer that positive feedback for them and that encouragement. So throughout the entire book, he's trying to feed them with uh, not to get down and depressed and not when the persecution comes because the tendency is when persecution hits is to get up and flee and run away and save your own skin. That's not what the writer wants you to do. The writer wants you to stay and fight. And you stay and fight by encouraging each other. By giving that power to others so that you feed off one another. In the verse that was read earlier, right up here on the screen, as you see it, that was given to you, that Marty read a few moments ago, Take care, brothers, lest there be any of you of an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Encourage, exhort, that word there, it also translates encourage in some of your Bibles. It's in the present tense. Encourage one another today as long as it is called today. That means you take the initiative. You be the one. Don't be waiting around for somebody to come and encourage you. So how many times do we mope at things? How many times have you just got in a bad rut and, and you just, you wish somebody would come along and encourage you? The verse says, don't wait around for somebody to come and encourage you. You take the initiative and you go encourage someone else. You offer them. You encourage someone today while it's called today because there may not be a tomorrow. You take advantage of it now. So that, so that no one you know will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. So that none of you will be hardened by the deceitful. Because if they allow that lack of energy, that lack of courage, that down and out, weak spiritual battery level feeling to get hold of them, they'll sit and they'll mope. They're older people. Maybe people that are older, maybe people that really don't know what's happening and how to fix it. They might go out to their car and they might try to crank it up and they might get just the turning over, the rrr, 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 rrr. Sounded real good, didn't it? The rrr, 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 rrr. Yeah. Got a knack for that stuff, you know. And as they continue to go over and over and over, this happens a lot when you get on your lawnmower. When you don't want to cut grass... And you sit on your lawnmower, if you have a ride mower, and you turn, and it's, it sounds like it's fixing to just fire up, and it just keeps going, rrr, rrr, I'm going to do it again, rrr, 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 rrr. and the longer you, don't laugh at me, you laugh because you know it's true, and the more you do it, the weaker it gets, until pretty soon you try it again, and it just get that click, 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 click. And it's already been a bad day, and it's hot, and you're tired. There's a tendency to do what? Turn the switch off. Can't do nothing about it today. I'm going to go back in the house. I'm going to just let it sit. And it's going to be harder to get out there the next day because you know you're going to have to figure out some way to get that lawnmower cranked. Some people, they might get out there with their car and it won't start. 
And they just think, instead of trying to do something, because I don't know what to do, I'll just go in. There's nobody here to help me. So I'll just go and wait, and they just wait. And then they don't do anything. And they sit. That, that's the fear. That's what he's telling us the fear is. The writer of Hebrews is saying, that's the fear. You go on and encourage somebody today so that none of you be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. So that none of you out there may get out in a situation where you try to get your spiritual battery motivated and go. And you try to get that get up and go spiritually. And you just can't. It's got up and went. And you try and you can't. And you just think, you know what? It'd be better. I might as well just not even do it. I might as well put it off to another day. And when you put it off that next day, the grass grows just a little bit higher. When you put it off another day, it continues to grow. Until pretty soon, you don't even care anymore. And your heart is hardened by that deceitfulness of sin. So you encourage each other now while you have the opportunity. Now, when we continue in the book of Hebrews, he's going to give us an opportunity and going to show us a way. He's going to show us the practice of how to do that. So, somebody once said, I wrote down a few quotes I want to share with you as we go. Said this, People live by encouragement. Without it, they die. Slowly. Sadly. Bitterly. And I made those dramatic pauses because that's what's in the quote. People live with encouragement. Without it, they die slowly, sadly, and bitterly. William Arthur Ward, who I really could not tell you who that is, but I liked what he said about encouragement. Flatter me, and I may not believe you. Criticize me, and I may not like you. Ignore me, I may not forgive you. Encourage me, and I will never forget you. See the power in lending to one side, calling to side, borrowing the energy from. We all need that boost, church. He gives us the practice. Here's where we go in Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 is the practice of encouragement. We're going to look there in verse 24. I encourage you not to just look on the screen, but to look in your Bibles and make notes in there if you don't feel... If, if you feel the power to do so. Verse 24. Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and to good works. I want to break this down just a little bit in detail. Let us consider. I put in parentheses there. I hope you can read it in blue. Yes, you can read it in blue there. Sometimes it shows up different on mine than it would out there for you. The word, the phrase, let us consider, let us observe attentively to fix one's eyes or mind upon. That really just indicates that what you're doing is intentional. It doesn't just happen by accident. Let us consider, let me be attentive, let me fix my eyes, let me fix my mind, let me grab a point and point to and know what I'm doing with what I'm doing. I'm going to consider this. I'm not going to just accidentally allow it to happen. I'm going to actively consider this to stir up love into good works. Now, before we get into that, I want to read you what some of these other versions read. The New English Bible, I'm not very familiar with it, but the New English Bible had this to say about it. This was the translation of this verse. We ought to see how each of us may best arouse others to love and active goodness. We ought to see how each of us may best arouse. That I'm looking for the opportunity. I'm not just considering. I'm fixing my eyes. I'm aware of, of what's going on in your life. Or you are aware of what's going on in my life. Or you're aware of the 
person next to you what's going on in their life or your loved one and you see it. You're fixing your eyes on them. You're making your mind up toward them that you're going to find something. You're going to be able to see when they're hurting, when they're weak, and you're going to do something and look for opportunities to arouse them spiritually, to rile them up spiritually so that you can motivate them and push them and lend them your energy. Man, how, how much church would be much more exciting if we would do that to each other. Then he says, the, the, the message reads, which is a paraphrase, it's not a, a version, I understand that. More of a commentary. It says, let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging love. Let's see how inventive we can be. Now that, that's cool. To see how in sometimes it takes some inventive ways. Let's be intentional about it. To see how inventive we can motivate each other. And then he says, let us consider, let, let's do this intentionally, how we can stir up to spur, provoke, stimulate, incite someone to do something. That's just sometimes hard to do, isn't it? It's sometimes hard to stir up somebody. I, I, I remember, I've thought about this a few times. Uh, I believe, Eddie, did you say that you were going to give away a donkey? A mule or a donkey? A donkey. You have a donkey to give away. I think we've been there, hadn't we, O.L.? Hadn't, hadn't you and I and John tried to give, we tried to give you a donkey, didn't we, O.L.? Didn't work out too well, did it? You got it. But it took a while, didn't it? We tried to get that donkey that just, you know how they say stubborn as a mule or stubborn. Well, they are. We had that thing trying to get it in the trailer. And its feet were here up against that trailer. I was had the rope tied around that thing's neck, dragging it as best, wrapped around my waist. That kid ripped me in two, trying to pull, because you know I'm not, I'm not much big at all. It's just Tried to pull that thing as best I could into that trailer. OL has a two before, beating it on the rear end, trying to get it to move. John is standing on the donkey, holding on, to the barrier that we have from the catch pin, jumping up and down. And he just doesn't move. Sometimes it is so hard to provoke people. They want to be content in the sense. They don't want to be spurred up spiritually. They're happy with where they are. They're, they're, they enjoy being depressed and down. But for the most part... This passage really applies to all of us in the sense of we are to be attentive to the needs of others, fix our eyes on each other, our minds upon, and be intentional to spur, provoke, stimulate somebody to do something for their soul. I used to enjoy looking at... Uh, people used to go to gospel meetings all the time. They don't go very much anymore. But I remember seeing those old posters from those old gospel meetings and they would say, come here, soul-stirring lessons. You remember those? Soul-stirring lessons from brother so-and-so. How the, the point was they're coming to provoke you, to stimulate you, to incite you to do something. And you know, I've, you know how I provoke, you know how I use this word. I use this word as you got that hot stick. You got that hot stick at the sale barn and how these guys take that hot stick. It's got that electrical charge in it and they poke those cows in the rear end and it sends that charge to just push them to go. It gives them that little boost to go in the direction. That's the concept we need toward each other. I need to be developing lessons that's going to look at you and in tune to your needs and looking to see for ways of how I can stimulate you to want to do something for the Lord. And you should be doing the same thing for each other and me. That's what the passage is. That's the practice of pulling up alongside, taking your spiritual clamps, hooking it up to my heart, and allowing me to feed off your energy for just a little while to get me going. 
That's the practice that we've got laid out for us. And it's so intentional because... You, why do we need... Why can we use this? Because when you continue to look at Hebrews chapter 10, and I've got a whole lot of notes here that I'm not going to get to, but when you look, you look at verse 19, because you have a confidence there to enter the holy place. That we have, verse 21, we have a new and better high priest. Verse 22, because we've been cleansed from an evil conscience. Verse 23, because we've got this confession of our faith, our hope of He who is faithful. One way to do this. One of the ways that we do this simply is what it says in the next verse. By not neglecting to meet together. Whether you realize it or not, somebody came this morning and when they looked at you and saw you here this morning, they felt better about themselves because you were here. I didn't say anything to her yet, but when I saw Peggy Irons, I knew she's been sick, I knew she's been struggling. When I looked at her this morning, I felt better about me being here because I knew, you know what, I might complain. I, I didn't sleep very well last night. I had a hard time getting going this morning, needed an extra cup of coffee. But I looked at her and I thought, if she can be here, I can be here. Billy Howard, who's here this morning, his wife, his home, still cold cover coming from an infection who needs to be there, take care of her, knows that he needs to be here because by being here, he's being uplifted by all of this, but not knowing that just him being here is making those around him feel so much better because he's here. Simply just coming in that door, sitting in your pew, and opening your mouth as you sing is a way that you do this. There are other ways. We do it... Go on to the next slide. Let's go on and, and we'll get these. We do it by performing this by living for Jesus. Just simply living for Jesus. When you look at Acts chapter 16 verse 22, the Philippian jailer when Paul and Silas are there in prison, what are they doing? All they're doing is just living for Jesus. They're just singing and they're just praying. And what happens? The jailer's converted by their activity. Just simply by living for Jesus. That energy fed off into him. Another one you got is you got the scriptures. Romans 15 verse 4 tells us that we study the scriptures because in them we have life because they give us an example because in them we have hope looking at those things that were written aforetime because we look at the examples that can give us encouragement and we feed off those psalms and, and some of those proverbs and the Bible stories that we've got then our deeds some of the just some of the good things that we do can be motivational to other people and we can we can encourage people by those and then finally when you look the last one there is our words that, that's some of the easiest, most common ways we can do that, just by our words. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, when he, when he closes out that letter, he tells us that the archangel's going to come with a shout, the Lord's going to descend from the air, the world's going to end, but the Lord's going to carry those home who served Him and carry us up to be in glory with Him forever. And you know what he says that last verse? He says, you can comfort one another, or you can encourage one another with these words of knowing that our Lord is going to return and carry you home. That's power. That's power. Church, what are you doing to motivate? Do you need that encouragement this morning? Now here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put those people here that need the encouragement, I'm going to put you on the forefront this morning as we start. As we get ready to go ahead and sing that invitation song that John's got, just as I am. Those of you here that are in the doldrums, that are in the rut, that are in that situation where you need some encouragement and you need someone to just provoke you and stimulate you and you've been waiting on it, you need someone to come alongside of you and give you that boot. You've waited and you hadn't got it. Here's what I want you to do. If you were out at Walmart and you needed that energy in your car, You'd open your door and you'd get out and you'd ask the person next to you, do you have any jumper cables? 
You'd open up your hood and you'd wait for somebody to come along and say, do you need some help? You would make the first move by indicating you needed the help, wouldn't you? You wouldn't just sit there in your car for days and days and days and say, nobody's going to come. Nobody's going to be here. Where's all those people to help me out? You'd get on your phone and you'd call AAA, although I've never known anybody to call AAA. That's what I always hear on TV. Never heard. You might call your husband. You might call your wife. You might call John. You might call Walmart to come out there because they have a ton of jumper cables on aisle 17 back there at the back. But you would make the first call. Here's what I want you to do. If you're in the rut, if you're in the doldrums and you need that encouragement, I want you to make that first cry of help this morning. I want you to raise your hand figuratively. Not, you don't have to physically. I want you to step out of that aisle and I want you to say, I need that encouragement. It's not that I'm a, it's not that I'm, I know of anything that I've done wrong that I'm sinning. I just need somebody to come alongside and hook up their spiritual heart to me and give me that boost that I need. If you do that, I guarantee you, if you come down that aisle this morning and you sit on this pew and we have that prayer, you will have 10 to 12, 15 to 20 people come down here and feed you that energy you need. But they might not know you need it. And the only way they're going to know you need it is if you say, hey, I need a boost. I need a boost. Because spiritually, my life is going downhill fast. And I need something. So you look at your life because Jesus is here and He's got that ultimate boost because He's put His Spirit within us. And when we encourage one another, what we do is we share that Spirit. And you can do that. You can receive that Spirit today. If you're not a member of the body of Christ, oh, we got something for you here that you need. That blood of Jesus can give you that forgiveness. Through faith, repentance, and baptism, we can share that with you. But whatever your need, give that cry of help that you need that boost because all of us need it sometime. And nothing to be ashamed of. You might be a little embarrassed at first, but you'll feel so much better afterwards as we stand and sing that invitation song. John?